Welcome to another tutorial video. This time around, we're gonna answer a very simple question that came into us the other day, which is why you use net income when you're calculating a metric like return on assets or ROA. So here's the exact question that came in. In the return on assets calculation, why do we use net income? Shouldn't we use net operating profit after taxes instead since assets represent both equity and debt investors? So let's take a step back first and quickly remind you what return on assets means, how you calculate it, and then what some of these other returns-based metrics mean, and then we'll answer this question directly and show you a few examples. Return on assets is defined as a company's net income over its average assets over a certain period. So if you take its net income over the course of a year, you take its assets at the beginning and the end of the year, you average them up and then use that in the denominator. And it tells you how efficiently a company is using all its assets to generate profits. So you can think of it as a company having a certain number of assets and then using a portion of them to generate its profits in a given period. You can also view it as how dependent a company is on its assets. So for some companies, a manufacturing company or a commercial bank or a real estate company, the assets are going to be much more important than they will be for other companies like software or professional services companies, for example. Return on assets is useful for comparing similar companies in the same industry. So you can tell if one company is operating more efficiently and using its assets more efficiently than another one, for example. There are other returns-based metrics as well, which we've covered in previous lessons. Return on equity is another common one, which is just the company's net income divided by its average equity on the balance sheet and then another one is return on invested capital, which is NOPAT, net operating profit after taxes divided by the company's average debt plus equity plus preferred stock and other long-term funding sources. So if you look at all these in Excel and you look at something like NOPAT, for example, this one, you just take the company's EBIT or operating income and multiply by one minus the tax rate to get to it. So you pretend as if interest income and expense and other items don't exist and a company is just taxed on its operating income. Net income, you should already be familiar with. And then if you look at the calculations here, return on equity, we're just taking that annual net income divided by the average equity. And return on assets, we are taking the company's annual net income and divided by the average assets. And then finally, return on invested capital is when we finally use NOPAT and we divide by the company's average invested capital Invested capital here for Walmart is just their debt plus equity. They don't have any preferred stock and they don't have other long-term funding sources. So that's all it comes down to. So now back to that question, why net income? To answer this, you have to think about the two ways that you can view a company's value. I always like to explain these questions by going back to the core concepts and the key principles. And this is a great example of how you can do that. Equity value, represents the value of all the company's assets, but only to equity investors. In other words, the common shareholders in the company. Whereas enterprise value represents the value of only the company's core business assets, but to all investors in the company, equity, debt, preferred, and if there are any other types of funding sources, you would also include them when calculating enterprise value. Now it's important to note that these pairings apply not just to valuation multiples. You might know, for example, that you pair enterprise value with EBITDA and enterprise value with EBIT. But these concepts are about more than just valuation multiples. They also apply to financial metrics and ratios such as return on assets, return on equity, and return on invested capital. And I'll show you an example of what I mean. If you think about equity value and a company's balance sheet, according to the definition we just stated, equity value is going to represent everything on the asset side of the balance sheet, plus possibly off balance sheet assets that aren't even listed here. And then on the other side, it's going to represent just the company's common shareholders equity, which we've circled down here. On the other hand, for enterprise value, you only take selected parts of the asset side. So you're not gonna take cash and short-term investments. You're gonna subtract those out. You're also gonna subtract out long-term investments None of these is truly required for a company to run its business and to keep operating, so they're not considered core business assets. If you had other items like equity investments or assets related to other side activities, you'd also subtract those out. 
And then on the other side, you start with the company's common shareholders equity, but you also add preferred stock and long-term debt and short-term debt and anything else that represents other investor groups here. So based on that definition, you should already start to see why you use net income when you're calculating return on assets. And it's because net income is available only to the common equity investors. Remember, when you calculate net income, the debt investors have already been paid with interest. So you've already subtracted out that interest payment by the time you get to net income. Therefore, the debt investors can't receive any other payment and the net income is solely available to the common equity investors in the company. As a result, net income pairs with equity value and it also pairs with all the company's assets. Why? Because the common equity investors in the company have a claim on all the company's assets, both the core assets and the non-core assets. It's the same idea for return on equity. Net income pairs with equity investors and equity value, and therefore all the company's assets as well. And then for return on invested capital, NOPAT, net operating profit after taxes, is available to all the investors, debt, equity, and preferred. The reason why goes back to the calculation I just showed you in Excel, which is that when you calculate NOPAT, you start with the company's EBIT or operating income. Now, at this point, you haven't yet subtracted out the interest that is paid to the debt investors. You haven't subtracted out preferred dividends. You haven't subtracted out any form of payments to the other investors. So at this point, this money is available to all the investors in the company. And so this corresponds to enterprise value. And so you pair a metric like NOPAT with debt plus equity plus preferred stock plus possibly other long-term funding sources on the liabilities and equity side of the balance sheet. But let's go back to that original question now. What if you did want to use NOPAT in a returns-based metric, not return on invested capital, but some other metric based on the company's assets? Would it be possible to pair NOPAT with a company's assets in some way? And the answer is yes. But to do this, you'd have to subtract the company's non-core business assets, like cash, investments, equity investments, or associate companies, and anything else that's related to the company's side activities. So anything it's doing that doesn't have much of anything to do with selling products to customers. The pairing to think about here is that core business assets go with NOPAT, go with equity plus debt plus preferred investors, and all of those pair with enterprise value as well. So here's an example of how you might do it going back to our example for Coach and their balance sheet. Here's what the enterprise value view of their balance sheet looks like. They have total assets of around 4.7 billion, cash of 1.3 billion, short-term investments of 234 million, and long-term investments of 406 million. So if you want to use NOPAT in this scenario, you have to take the company's total assets, the 4.7 billion here, and then you'd have to subtract out all the non-core business assets, cash, short-term investments, and long-term investments, that gives you a total for the core business assets of 2.7 billion. And then you could take this number and you could pair it with NOPAT. So you could take the company's NOPAT, divide by that 2.7 billion, you take the average, of course, over a certain period, and then you could create some type of new returns-based metric. You might call it return on core business assets or ROCBA. I don't really know. I'm just making up these names to show you hypothetically what would happen. But that is how you would have to change around the company's assets and its balance sheet if you wanted to pair its NOPAT, its net operating profit after taxes, with something related to its assets. Let's do a quick recap and summary. Return on assets is defined as net income divided by average assets over a time period. It tells you how efficiently a company is using all its assets to generate profits or how dependent a company is on its assets to generate its profits. When pairing net income with anything, you have to keep in mind that it's only available to the equity investors in the company. So you have to pair it with everything else that corresponds to the equity investors, which means total assets, common equity on the balance sheet, and equity value. On the other hand, when you're looking at a metric like NOPAT that is available to all the investors, you have to pair it with core business assets, invested capital, 
and enterprise value. All those fit into the same way of viewing a company's value, just like with net income, equity, equity value, and total assets fit in with how you view the company's value there. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you understand a little bit more about how you calculate these returns-based metrics and how you decide what to pair them up with on the balance sheet.